exercise 1B, where we're taking what we did last week and uh, adding to it. So I called it uh, floor pan variable filler. So here's, you know, here's the result of what we did last week. And in each well, all that's there is a Word document. There's no files or anything else to download. All you're doing is getting instructions and what to continue doing on what you've already been working on. So last week, if you recall, we made, we started with a, a copy, a non-parametric copy, a dumb copy, whenever you got a body that's non-parametric, it's got that, that not similar, no smoking sign, whatever you want to call it. They used to be red, it's kind of, well now they're black, but um, it, that means it's not parametric. There's nothing there I can just edit by typing in different values and angles and radiuses or whatever. But our whole project is all about, let's make a floor pan that matches that, that copy we've got, but we want a parametric. We want to be able to modify things. I could change the angle of this footrest surface. I could change the fillet radius up there or down here. So I could do whatever I need to change, change the height of things. Just by editing and double click, or uh, changing the numbers, right? So that's why we're, we're basically rebuilding it, kind of like reverse engineering. Um, just matching the, the that body. And, and not that we're gonna do it, but the idea is when we're done with our part, our part will be the real thing and that, that copy we have, we won't need it anymore. And so we wanna be able to delete it. So that's why when, when we did have to touch it, like when we started out, we drew some lines on the edges of that gray part. Um, we made those lines non-associative. That meant they weren't linked to the edges that we were picking. They were right on the edges, exactly where they were, but they weren't linked to it. Same thing with the planes we created. We created planes on that gray floor pan, but we put, made the planes, we did it right, we made the planes non-parametric or non-associative. So that, the only reason we're doing that is so that in the end we could delete that body. I mean, I could try it right now. If I delete that body, I didn't get any messages, I didn't get any errors, not, all those planes are still there, all the lines are still there. So it's a good test to see if you if you did um, make everything non-associative, try to delete that body. Um, so, and, and I'll just remind you of this, this is something I've, I've probably talked about in every class, but for whatever reason, NX handles wireframe in a weird way. If you make it non-associative, it's not in the history. It's only in this folder in the top of the part navigator called non-timestamp geometry. So all those lines we made, they're, they, they know they're lines. And, and you can unpack it uh, if you want to see them individually. So if you go to any, any particular line, whatever, you double click on it, it knows it's a line. It even says non-associative on the top. It just has a start point and an end point, but those points aren't tied to anything. I could, I could put a point somewhere else, but they are where they are, that's all it is. All right, so. and, and again, I don't know why NX does this, or Siemens does this, or whoever's still upkeeping NX. For wireframe, it's like that, but if you make planes that are non-parametric, they are a part of the history. They know they're non-parametric, though it just says fixed down plane. So non-parametric bodies and planes, they're in the history. Non-parametric wireframe is not. I don't have an answer for why, but I like, I just like to say that a lot. All right, so that's what we did last week. We made um, what we called the, the main slabs, which was that whole thing. No, I, I got an extra copy of something down here. That's what we were calling the main slabs. It's just kind of the bottom flat and the footrest and the, uh, the what do we call it? I, could, I keep wanting to call it a firewall, a dash panel. We call it a dash panel. Um, and then we made, we started to make the tunnel. We didn't finish the tunnel. But we made, you know, the tunnel is that thing in the middle, and I'll just hide this for a second. The tunnel is this thing, this bump, uh, where the transmission and the drive shaft and all that stuff fits underneath it. Um, we made the side walls and the, the left side and the right side and the top walls, but we didn't put it all together to make this blend along the top or the blend where the tunnel meets the, the main shape, okay? And that's, that's what this whole session is, this, this session. Just to make, really to make two, no, I'll say three edge blends. That's what we're doing. We're going to make three edge blends in the whole exercise. Okay, now there's a lot more to it, but and it, it's a little bit 
I don't, I don't, I guess I'll say it's complex. It's a little bit complicated. It's tricky to work with. It's easy to mess up making edge blend because we're going to make variable radius edge blend, right? So I'm going to, and, and you could see on this, this thing, the, the blend where the tunnel walls meet the main slab walls, you can see it's a varying radius right along here. I know I keep turning red on here, but um, maybe if I set this to, The, the, this radius right here, that varies. It's not the same radius here as it is there. That one looks pretty constant, but it's, it's, I'm sure it's varying a little bit. These are all varying radiuses. Like here you can see the radius is whatever it is there. Then all of a sudden it gets narrower, smaller radius down there. And then from there all the way to the end is probably a constant radius. Same thing on this side, it's varying at the bottom. So we're gonna try to match that, because again, that's the copy that we were given. We just want our new one to be parametric. And that, while we're at it, we wanted to match that one. One thing we're doing in here, and, and I, when I took this class from the from the guy who originally made it, even though the non-parametric, this thing, that's actually a constant radius on the top. We're going to make it slightly varying. I'm not sure why he did it in the class originally, so I, I just did it in the newer class that I made from it. So there's going to be a little little difference right here from the gray. When our part's done, it, it's going to be a little bit bigger radius here. It's going to start smaller and get bigger and then get smaller again, just so you know, all right? And as we're doing this variable radius, we're going to measure some stuff on the fly, okay? The tool that we're going to talk about to measure things on the fly, it, in the instructions it goes over it, but I'm just going to use it right now to show you something. You know, we know the measure tool. I'm in the analysis tab, but we got the measure tool. If you go to measure, the new measuring tool, if you... Um, if you haven't had an NX class in a while, the measure tool did change a little, a little bit. It seems confusing if you don't know it. But it's set to objects, so it just means just start picking things, and it's going to give you information based on what you pick, right? So I could pick, for example, that face. If there is a uh, either a minimum or a maximum radius that's kind of constant, it says it in there. Constant, I'm sorry, minimum radius of curvature is 63. So that whole fillet is 63, right? So I can unpick that or reset the whole window. If I pick this one, that one I'm not too sure because it says minimum radius, but you know it's got a radius this way and a radius that way. I don't. That's not telling me that that's a constant radius of 62.9. As a matter of fact, even when I did this, it says minimum radius of 63. That's not really proof that that is a constant radius of 63. It might get slightly bigger on the end. But the smallest area might be 63. So the measure tool sort of we could use to get the radius, but like over here, if I measure that, I guess I should stay in there. If I pick this, that says the minimum radius is 49.9. But if I pick over here, now minimum radius is the same. It sure doesn't look like it, does it? Oh, you know, I'm sorry, that's why. Because it's the minimum radius of the whole face. I'm not picking a specific point, sorry. That, that's why we're using this other tool I'm about to show you. So that doesn't tell me, you know, I mean, obviously I can see that's not a constant radius. So it says minimum radius. I'm guessing that means over here it's probably about 50, right? So well, we're gonna need to know what's the radius over here, right? So there's another tool. I don't think I talked about this in NX1 or NX2. So if those are the only classes you had with me, then you wouldn't know about this tool. There's a neat tool. I'm gonna show it to you right now. In the instructions, at one specific point, it's going to tell you to use it. It kind of gives you an instructions on how to use it. You go to the analysis tab, and then there's different groups up here. There's one called face shape, and there's a more gallery in the face shape, and you go behind that. It's called local radius. Okay. Now there's a lot on this window. We're actually really only using one piece of this. You could pick a point. It does say select point, so you can pick specific points. Um, my prompt on the bottom left says select point on a curve, an edge, or a face. So the idea is you're going to get information about a face or a curve or an edge, but, but at some specific point, right? So that's why they call it local radius. Now, what you learn, the way we're going to use this tool, I mean, you could use it for all these things that are in here, but the only thing we're using it for is in the bottom area it says minimum radius, okay? That doesn't mean you have to check or uncheck these things. It's just... Um, Check, well, I'll show you what it means when you, when you do the check mark. So if I put my cursor right here on this face and I click, 
Okay. It seems a little cumbersome at first, but I click and a, a bunch of fields populated in that window. Like coordinates, that tells me that point that I clicked in absolute X, Y, and Z, that's where it is. 1700 in the X, 119 in the Y, 405 in the Z. I don't care about that. I just, it's just telling me where it was. Okay. There's also U and the V. Well, every surface has two directions. Um, there's this direction and that direction. Um, it's weird because it looks pretty close. My U says 0.4888 and the other one says 0.4488. First I thought it can't be exactly the same. What that is, the U and V, again, we don't need this information, but if you ever do, this is what this does. Um, it tells me what percentage of the way am I in the U direction or the V direction. Actually, right now I'm not sure because I'm, you know, I'm about halfway in both directions. So I, I can't tell which one's the U and which one's the V. But here's the neat thing about this tool. This is what I like, and you probably won't do this the first time. You'll think, well, if I want to measure over here, you got to make another point. And I could, and it shows you the last point you made. But the right way to do it is what I did. I clicked on it, and you can actually take that point that I just made, and I can drag it. You see the numbers changing as I'm dragging it? So now I'm, I'm about halfway in this direction, and my U and V says 0.51 in the U, 0.87 in the B, so that's telling me the U direction is this way, right? I'm about halfway across in that direction. That's what that number is, by the way. What what percentage of the surface are you at that point? We don't need that for our exercise. I'm just saying that's what that's telling me, all right? All I really wanted was the minimum radius. It's actually showing in a little window here. The reason that window's showing there is because the box is checked. If you uncheck it, it doesn't show you there, but it's still in this window. By default, I think minimum radius is on, and there is one that just says radius. That's only if you're picking a curve that has a radius in only one direction. Every face has a radius in two different directions, so there is no just radius. So with a face, it's always it's always a minimum radius you're looking for. But here, here's what this what my conclusion is going to be: how to use this tool. As I move it around, I'm looking, I'm watching the minimum radius. Okay, it's not changing. That's telling me that. Going across this way is 63 mil radius, and it's constant all the way across. Okay. Now, another cool thing about this, not only can I drag it on that face, I can drag it to the next face. And there, it's changed. You see the minimum radius? It's still pretty close, 63.0 something. And, and actually, 63.0 something, in my mind, that's still 63, right? And if I go to the next one along that one, 63.0, this one, all along there, subtly changing, but not much. So what I'm trying to get at is that top fillet across there, it's 63 mil, it's constant, that whole thing, okay? By the way, if you, uh, like I said, if you put it on a curve instead, like an edge, gotta get right on it, come on. Come on, mouse, what are you doing? All right, right there. See, now it's just a radius, there's no minimum radius because it only has one direction, okay? But what, what happens if I go to a variable fillet? And, or what if I go to a flat? It says the minimum radius is infinity. So that means it's flat. Maximum radius is also infinity. I can see it in the window. But down here is where it varies. Okay. So as I drag this, the radius here, it's as I'm dragging it, it says minus 80. Now the minus and the positive doesn't really mean much. It just means is it rounding, you know, is it going, is it like a, a trough or is it a bump, right? But the radius is radius, whether it's the you know, fillet or around, whatever, however you want to say it. And all we care about is the number. And as I move to see the radius, oh, this whole area is still just about 80. But then when I get to this spot, now it starts to come down. Now it's 50, 40, like, so it gets down to about 50. So I can safely say this, this one starts off pretty much at 80. On the other end of it, it's 50. But it's not a linear change. It stays 80 for a while. Then in the middle, it comes down almost like a, a S curve and then it stays 50 for a while. So anyway, we're going to take that knowledge and, and make the variable fill it using this tool. Okay. So at, at the first step in the exercise, it doesn't tell you that, but I, I was going to tell you at some point anyway, so I just, I like to take a couple minutes to talk about that tool. That was called local radius. It's in the analysis tab, face shape group behind the more button right there, right? So back to the actual step by step. So I had the main slab showing. Um, so we're going to make those blends. Got the tunnel hidden. There's the tunnel. 
So the first thing we're going to do is um, variable radius, it varies obviously at different points. So we're going we're gonna to make an edge blend. So right now I have these, you know, this, this, oh, I got this, the one that's not high up blend, I got this, I still have my filter on. That face and that face, where they meet, I want to trim them to each other. So we're going to trim them to each other and um, that'll give us a hard edge along there. You know, this, trim off this excess, trim off the top of this one. All I'll be left with is the inside there and the bottom part of, bottom part of that. So we'll have a hard edge there. That hard edge, we're going to make a fillet along that hard edge. But I want it to vary. And pretty much every time you make a variable fillet, you vary it at different point locations along the edge. Okay. So we're working towards getting points along curves. And at one point, you're going to see the picture here right there. We're going to make all those points. And I got a bunch of numbers on there. I'll, I'm, going to, I'm going to sort of demo this, but I'll do it fast. We're gonna make points all along this intersection curve where the edge blend's gonna go at all these specific locations. And at, at each location, we're going to vary the radius. Okay. So the first thing, it says uh, we're in the tunnel. Now, I, in, my, in my tree, last week I made, the last thing I did was I made right side tunnel, left side tunnel, and top tunnel. That's those three slabs, okay? Um, but when I save the file and I close it and then I open it again, now nothing's active. So the work I'm about to do is not really just specific to the right side or the left side or the top of the tunnel. It's related just to the, the tunnel in general. So I'm gonna under, or I'm gonna make that active. So this will be, the next thing I create will be in the tunnel group after whatever's current, which is the, the last feature group. So the next thing I create is gonna go right after the top tunnel feature group. Not in it, but after it. And, you know, in my instructions, I do things like hide this and show this so it's easier to see what we're working on. So I have you hide the left side for right now. And I hesitated. So we're going to do a quick pick window. Hide that. And uh, so I've got the top tunnel and the right side tunnel. So I want to make that, I want to make the points along there where we're going to vary things. So I'm going to make an intersection curve between those two. So I'm going to go to curve tab, intersection curve. Um, remember, it, it does it by default now, but you, we want to be in body faces whenever we're picking faces, unless otherwise specified. So I'm going to pick that, I'm going to intersect that with whatever makes up my left side tunnel. There's an intersection curve along there, okay? Just FYI, it used to be that an intersection curve didn't really work very well to put points along a curve. You had to join it. With the join command, um, but now you can actually just use an intersection curve. So anyway, I made a curve. I want to make sure that's all appropriate to do so far. Yeah, so made a curve. And you see that intersection curve showed up. Okay. It's the last thing in the tunnel feature group. It's after the top tunnel feature group, so it's not in any of the tunnel internal feature groups. Okay. Could you do that again, please? Do what again? The top line. With the intersection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just intersected the top tunnel surface and the right side surface. I went to the intersection curve again. Okay. Remember, I'm not going to do it really slow so everybody keeps up with me. I'm, gonna, I'm, just, I'm just talking about it. But, but I'll, I'll help you with anything you need for that. Yeah. So now it says, uh, and, and you know, the order I do this could be a lot, a lot different ways. I, I, could make, I could make the points right now on this and then trim everything, or I can say, well, let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's make an intersection on the other side. And that's what I have you do. So it says show the left side surface, do another intersection curve, this time between the top tunnel and the left side. It's kind of the same thing. I'm making these, there, there are these blue curves going along where the tunnel walls meet. I'm going to do the right side, left side, and the top side tunnel wall. Where they meet, I got a couple of curves now. Okay. Now I want to put some points along that curve, but I want to start the points. I want to, I want to put them along the curve, but if you look at the curve, you know, it's an intersection curve, right? So it's like that, or stop exactly right there. You know, I, you know what I just realized is I made 
my wall isn't long enough right here. This wall. Try to pick that wall right there. It's not long enough. I didn't do that on purpose. Right? I, I, but I want to overbuild it because it's got to go beyond the front of the park. So now, what do I do, right? Well, here's the thing. That wall that I made right there, I know, because I remember, I made it by, it's, it's a law extension from a, a line, okay? So I, I'm gonna have to do this at some point, so I'm gonna do it right now, okay? It's one of these lines. Line's kind of right near that intersection curve there. I don't even get to hide this. Hey, you know, this is real life. I try to make my class just like real life. So let's see how we got that. There it is. That's the line I need. That's the line I use to make my law extension. Now it's a non-parametric line, right? So it is not tied to the original surface, but I, what I really need to do is make it longer. Right, because that sweep that I made. So I'm gonna, you can, even though it's not parametric, I just showed you, you can edit that. I didn't show you that because of this. I, it just came in handy that I showed it to you. Don't grab the cube because that'll actually move the line off of where I made it. Grab the sphere, and just drag it further up. I don't believe I made it too short. You know, I usually don't make mistakes like that. So now if I just show the uh, left side, see now it's going beyond it. I made it go wasn't long enough. So, what was I doing? Well, I was, um, <coughs> excuse me, I was basically talking about how I'm going to start. Let me show the intersection curve again. Here, here's what led me to that. <coughs> I want to put points at real specific locations along that curve. Okay? Um, but I want to, yeah, we're going to put points on a curve. And when you put points on a curve, you're measuring along the curve from some starting point. Well, I could use the end of the part, or the end of the curve, that, say this intersection curve. But the end of that intersection curve is really, it's just based on stuff we randomly drew. I remember when we made this, this top wall, we also made it, well, make it long enough so it's going through the part. Because actually that top wall is tied to the very bottom, and that one's just going through the part. But everybody did it slightly different. We dragged it a certain distance. So the edge of that line is nowhere precise. It's wherever I just drew it. So what we're gonna do is create a plane that will let us intersect to get a point at a real specific location. So the next step, after saying all that, I'll do this create a plane. Create a plane. I'll call it at distance. This one is going to be associative. And remember, the last every plane we made so far was non-associative. As long as we don't tell it, it's going to keep making them non-associative. So in the real world, a good habit is every time you go to a command, is reset it, and that will. Turn the associative back on. So I'm going to have it coming off the Z, Y, or Y, Z plane, which is a 1200. There's nothing to measure. 1200. Okay, and, and, and I mean, in the picture, it's up above everything. It doesn't really matter where it is. It's part, it's just a symbol. So that's good enough right there. Okay, so there's my plane. I'm going to call it datum plane X1200. And again, everything I'm doing here is just to get points at real specific locations to make a variable fill it. Okay. So now, and, and in fact, I don't. For the next few steps, I don't need to see these surfaces anymore. So I can hide the top tunnel. I can hide the left side tunnel, the right side tunnel. Okay. I really don't need to see those. Everything okay? Yes. <laughs> Nothing perfect. Good. Good. Um. So now I see the curves. I'm going to put points along those intersections, right? So a starting point is going to be exactly at the 1200 mark. So if we all make a plane at 1200, it doesn't matter how we each drag these lines. As long as they're beyond the front of the park, everybody's going to be in a slightly different spot. But we're all going to start from the same point here, 1200. So I'm going to go to the point command. Because in NX, to get an intersection point where, two, where things intersect, a curve, it's in the point command. Yeah, you go to the intersect command, but in NX you go to the point command. 
and I have it set the intersection point. Remember this too, you gotta be careful. I'm gonna pick two things, but the second pick has to be the curve because it says curve to intersect. First thing can be curve or surface or plane, but the second thing has to be a curve. So I'm gonna pick a plane in my curve. I can't pick the curve first because it won't let me pick the plane second, if that makes sense. So I'll pick the plane and go here and I'll pick this curve. Ultimately, I'm gonna also, and, and really we should have this on feature curves. I don't know if I tell you that. Yes, I do, I say use feature curves for the rule. Because that means no matter how long that intersection is, it's gonna, it's gonna know it's on the entire intersection. Okay, so I pick that. There's my point. It tells me where it is in X, Y, and Z. It's, all I care about is 1200 in the X, because that's the square of the top of the tunnel, let's put that point. Okay. And that's gonna be an important point, because we're gonna measure, I'm gonna put a bunch of points along here. Every one of them is gonna measure back to that one. So, and, and yes, we're, we're gonna do a lot of naming of points. It's kind of, yeah, it's no fun, but. So this is gonna be called RS datum, or datum if you like that name. Control point, something like that. RS datum control point. And we are gonna be working with points when I'm making the fillet, so it, it can be a little tricky. You gotta carefully pick things. If you pick them in the, tree here it's a lot better so if they're named then you, it's, it's almost like you can't go wrong right you'll see when we get to that part of it so i got that that's a kind of a starting point and, and again i could i can make another one on this side right now we call that the left side control but i'm just you know in my instructions i just i do the other points along here now so the second point it's going to be a point so i'm using the point command but this one is called point on curve slash edge Okay, first you pick the curve, and even here, I don't want to set it to feature curves, just a good habit. I think if you don't right now, it won't matter, but I would say do it anyway. Um, so we're gonna pick that curve, and um, it's, it's asking us for a location along the curve. Actually, well, I don't know, I don't know what the default is, but you could have it at, I think by the, you know, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna reset this. I'm gonna set this to point along curve, and see the default is, you know, I'm gonna give it a distance along that curve, starting from where? The default is at the arc length, at the start of the curve, right? Where's the start of the curve? Mine's over here. Yours might be out here or a little bit short of it. So again, ours are all gonna be a different spots. So we don't wanna use just the start of the curve. So we go to start point. I gotta got pick the curve too. I went back to connect with curve. So that's the curve, but we're gonna do a start point because we, we wanna be precise. And the start point, it says specify it. Well, I got one right here called point RS datum control point. Can't go wrong if you pick it there, okay? So we're measuring from there. The first measurement is 100. Why is it 100? Because that's what my instructions say. And, and just by, I, I, I did some measuring myself. So that's where I want the varying radius to start. Because again, the, the, the great part they gave us, it really isn't varying. So in our, course that we're making it varying on the top. We decided to start it at about 100 mils, and it's 100 mils from that datum control point, okay? So I will hit apply, because that way the window will stay up. Oh, I know. I was having to hit okay because um, I, was, I want you to rename them. I'll rename them after I make, I think I'm gonna make three points. I'm gonna make three points, then I'll rename them all. So the second point is the same process, except it's 350 from the Control. So it's the same curve, same starting point, datum control point, but this one's 350. And, and yes, it should be curve length here. Okay, thereabouts. I'll hit apply again since I'm on a roll here. I'll do the last one. Same curve, same starting point, uh, datum control point. And this one is 669 from the first point, okay, now I can hit okay. So we got points along our curve. That curve is basically where the edge of the fillet's gonna go, it's gonna be an edge. So because I'm gonna make you do it, I'll, I'll do this, I'll rename. So this one's gonna be called RS.1. And remember, if you got a lot of renaming to do, you can do a copy. I just did a control C, 
then I go here to rename and do a control V, just change the last one. I mean, the longer the word is, the, the more time it saves if you do that. Just control V and control C work in there. Although, I'm finding out I can't talk about it and do it at the same time, so it's like it's giving me a hard time, my brain hurts. So now I got those three points, right? Then we're gonna do, well, we're gonna start prepping for the edge there, but it, it's funny because again, I can do this in different order. If I was if I was to do this over again, I would probably would make the points on the other side right now, but I didn't for whatever reason. So I'll do it the same order you're gonna do it. I tell you to go to the right side tunnel, show the last face blend, go to the top tunnel, show the last face blend, and actually hide the intersecting curves because we don't need it anymore. The only reason I needed that curve was to put the points on. When we do the actual edge blend, we're not going to use a curve, we're going to use an edge. Okay. So now I need an edge. So the way to make an edge between two slabs is trim them together, to trim them to each other and put them together. That is the, uh, it's in trim and extend, and it's called make corner. It's been around. Uh, you know, like we, we, we've done this in my other classes, so you may not remember it. it trim, trim and extend make corners like, it's like doing a blending two slabs together with a zero radius. So I'm going to blend that one, go to the next field, do that one. Okay, and the arrows tell you which side it's going to keep. And I do want the bottom of this one, but I want the other side of the top one, so I'm going to flip that arrow. So I'm going to hit OK. And what you can see that I did there, maybe I'll even hide this guy for right now. So, that guy. What I've got is a new feature called Trim and Extend. It's this whole thing with two pieces, and, and there's a hard edge where they meet. We're going to put an edge blend on there. Okay. And actually, yeah, I do have to do the edge blend right now. Okay. So, we're going to do the edge blend. So I'm going to go to, uh, I'm in surface, so edge blend is right here. It's also in the home tab, and I'll pick it since it's right there. Okay. And, and blends have a lot of options in them, face blends and edge blends. I think I said this before. Because sometimes you go into one of these buried options and you change it, it's easy to forget you did that. So we want all the default options. So it's a really good habit for blends to do that reset. But other ones, yeah, you might not have changed them. This one has a lot of options that are buried in there. So first thing we do is we select an edge, okay? It's usually set to tangent curves, that's fine. So I'll pick somewhere along that edge I just made, okay? And then there's a radius. I tell you to create a radius of 63. The reason I do that is because, remember I, when I just showed you that measuring tool, that uh, local radius, it was 63. And it was a constant 63. So if I left it like this, it would actually match the gray one. But, just to be difficult, we wanted to make a variable fillet even on the top, right? So the, to make it a variable fillet, variable radius, you open up the field that says variable radius, and there's a specify radius point. We actually created points. So if you, if you can get away with using inferred, you can, but you try not to use inferred very much. The best way to do this is because we have real points. Let's go to this guy, the type of point selection, existing point. Okay. And it says specify radius point. There's also a list here. There's nothing on my list. But I'm going to pick points. Now I know you're saying, well, it's already 63, right? Well, that's the default if I don't change it anywhere on there. But the first point is going to be, make sure this is the stuff I'm telling you. Oh, and this should be, well, I didn't show it in there yet. It says select RS.1. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. Here it is. I named it. I mean, you could pick it out here. But you want to be careful if you're picking it out here because it's not the control point, it's RS.1. Safer if you're picking the tree. Put the little blue arrows there to tell you that's the one you're working on right now. There's a, a, a point on the list down here. It says that's 63, okay? Because I didn't change it. It's, it's taken whatever the default was, which was 63. And we want it to be 63 there. So in other words, from here to there, I'm sorry, from the beginning of this blend to there, it's constant, but from here to the next one is when it's gonna change, right? Notice that even though I picked a point, that field stays highlighted, variable radius 
specify, specify radius point stays highlighted, my instructions just say, make sure it's still highlighted, and it will be. That's already end point. And it, when I, once you do pick the first point, the location then says something like this, through point. Because you could do other things. You could, if you didn't really have points, you could say, maybe your philosophy for your variable fillet is, well, instead of changing it at certain points, I want to change it at 25% of the curve, or the edge, or 30% of the edge, or something like that. But we're doing real points. So that, that went to through point on its own. We're going to leave it there. But it still does say, specify another radius point. The next one I'm going to pick is RS.2. Okay. That shows up in this field. Okay, but this one, we're going to change it to 90. You can already see it changing here. So here it's 63. Took the bulge out right there to 90. Okay. Um, but that's not all. Uh, and, and in this window, it's, it's all very logical. Okay. But there's a lot here to look at, and it just, I just want to explain it. Up in the top was that overall behind the scenes radius that everything was, unless I gave it some specific number. Down here, I have two points now that I'm varying. There's a field for the radius of each point. And whatever point I pick, if I go back to point one on the list, that one was set to 63. If I go to point two, that was set to 90. So you can work your way back and forth. If you're going to edit any of those, go to this list. Learn to, learn to love this list, you will, if you do this a lot. And use that list to go to the point you want to edit. You, I mean, you can pick it out here too, but the list is a better way to do it. Okay. Now, if I don't change anything, it's not really what I want because, all right, so the front of this was 63. I locked that at 63. That's now 90. The back was 63, but this is actually varying all the way to the end right now. It's, right now it's 90 here, and it gradually goes from 90 all the way here down to 63. See that? This is actually, this is not constant radius right here. That's 63, but over here, I don't know what it is. It's you know, about halfway, you're halfway to 90. And I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be 90, and then somewhere over here, I want it to go back to 63, which is actually the third point, RS.3. Point and see how that field is still highlighted? All this stuff I'm picking at here, that specified radius point field is still highlighted. So there's the last one, and that one we're gonna go back to 63. You can hit enter. So start 63, gradually goes up to 90, gradually comes back down to 63, and the rest of the way it's going to be 63. And that's it. You hit okay. Okay. A lot of talk there just to make one simple little radius. Okay. So that actually, you know what? I'm going to uh, I'm, just, I'm gonna come back and fix this later because I, I would do the same thing on the other side. I don't need to demo that, just take it out more time. Ultimately, you're gonna do the same thing. You put points along there, and, and I will, because I'm, I'm gonna do everything I'm making you do, right? But for now, I'll just, I'll just make it a constant radius for mine, just because it'll save time, and then I'll come back and fix it. How many times do I have to say that? So I'm gonna show the left side tunnel. Okay, let's pretend I made all my points. I'm gonna do the trim and extend. And this time I'm gonna do a trim and extend between the one I made earlier, that whole thing, that's a trim and extend. And then the, the, I'm adding the left side to it. And I wanna keep the other side of that. Actually, both of them are wrong. I just let both of them there. Yeah, there we go. So that's my new tunnel, okay? I'll hide that, I don't, again, I, I'm gonna show that again because I'm gonna need my own. Points, but let's say you're going to put an edge blend along there, and it's going to have you. I'll just show you real quick. You're going to have some points, so you're going to make a variable edge blend. I'll just show you a picture of it on the left side, like that. It's going to vary slightly in the middle, all right? Right now, for me, I'm just going to say edge blend along there. So, excuse me, that's good enough. So, I, I can do the rest of the demo like that, all right? So, I'm just going to show that original part again. Just to make sure I got enough. Yeah, I went far enough. So why is that wall? That wall ends right there. It's really weird. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's fine. <laughs> All right. So now I've got that stuff. I got the top, I should say, I got the top of the tunnel blended, okay? 
Now we're gonna make another one that's even a little bit more complex. Okay. And I'll, I will say this too, anytime you're doing the exercise, sometimes just because you might have done something slightly different where your lines are, or your planes, sometimes the numbers I give you, they give you a little error or they give you little messages. Feel free to tweak the numbers for the radius. You know, not, not a huge difference, but you know, one of them might say, make, make the radius measure it and it says the radius should be 90, make it, try and make it an 80 to see what happens, right? If you get errors. But anyway, what I need to do now, now that I got the whole tunnel filled out or finished, that entire tunnel now crashes into my main slabs. So where they intersect, it goes all the way around. In fact, that is one of the next things we're gonna do. And now it says in the main shape, let me see if I did everything else in the right spot. Yeah, that's all still in the right spot. Then it says in the main shape feature group up here. Well, I guess here's the idea. Everything I just did so far in my demo, I did it in the tunnel. I took the sides and the top of the tunnel, I put them together and I put the lens on them. So we did that inside the tunnel. Now I'm about to blend the tunnel to the main slabs, right? Blend this whole thing to that. That's not just in the tunnel. That's in the overall thing called main shape. It's not in the main slabs, it's not in the tunnel. It's in, it's between those two. So we go up one level to that and we make that active, okay? So the next thing I create is gonna be in main shape. So actually that should be right down at the bottom of model three. And the next thing I'm gonna create is an intersection because we need a curve to put a bunch of points on, okay? So, <coughs> intersection curve, make sure it's on body faces. I should hide that slab. Pick that as one of them, pick that as the other one. There's an intersection curve that goes all the way around. I should hide that guy, I'm not using that anymore. Okay. So now, we're gonna do the same, same concept. I'm gonna put a bunch of points along there. Bunch of points along that curve at real specific locations. But I do want a, a, a nice, uh, stable starting point. Okay, well, the way I have you do it, I mean, we could create a plane and intersect it. But the middle of this, the middle of this front of the tunnel there, it's not exactly at, at ZX. So the way we decide to do it is, I want to point exactly halfway across the middle of this. So the way I have you do it, is the point command, and you go here to between two points. Okay, if you go to between two points, you can pick the vertex points of that that little slat, that little straight line. Pick there and there. And be careful. I mean, almost every time you do between two points, you want it to be exactly halfway. But you can actually change the percentage. By default, it's 50, and that's what we want. But you may have, for some weird reason used a different number last time, maybe 30%. So double check, make sure it's on 50, or you can always reset. And there's my new point, right? That new point is my main shape data point. So we, before we had the, whatever we called it, it was, not, it was a data point, but this is called the main shape data point. So that's our starting point. And then like I said, then it gets to this step. Um, you know, I'm gonna just do one side even. I'm, gonna, I'm not even gonna do all this because I am gonna do it, but not in front of me. Because right? I'm gonna have my part, I'm gonna, every time I do a demo, I'm gonna keep working with the same assembly like you're working with. So I have to have it look right, so I'm gonna do it. But I'll just do one side, and I won't even do all of them right now, I'll just do some of them, just to show you the concept, because it's actually, once you get the points done, then you're gonna just do this measuring thing to see what the radius is supposed to be. And you're just gonna repeat it a few times. So, okay, let me do it. Let me do a couple of them. So I'm gonna start, I'll just do the, the right side here. So first point will be point on curve, right? And in that picture, it'll say, you know, here's, it's got the name RS L.1. So the first one I'm gonna make is, it's on this main curve but we're gonna do the start point, we're gonna do specify, we're gonna pick this guy, which, you know, if you're really doing it right, you pick main shape data point. And it says 59 mils, so 
59 mils, and it, I'm doing the right side, always, always watch that arrow. Okay, there it is. Um, this time I'll hit okay. Show you that we're gonna name them. And the other one was something like R.1 or L.1. This is gonna be RS, or what would you call this? But RS.1, this is RS L.1. So it's, I, I think I put L for lower. That makes sense. So it's got a different name. Than one. So there's one. Um, the other ones you, you can, uh, I'll just do a couple more and I'll hit apply so the window doesn't, the window stays up. We're always starting from the same starting point. Okay. And sometimes you miss that. Two ten. See, I'll just hit apply. No, the only thing is if I hitting apply, you still got to pick the curve again and start point again. For some tools in Katia or in NX, I mean, you can uh, you can actually say keep the same one selected. So this one's five oh five. I'll do one more. That was down there. And then the last one I'll do will be five ninety-two. Okay. Eight ninety-two is fine. All right. So there's the points. There's my varying points. Yes, there's going to be a few more. There's there's uh eleven points altogether. You can create that stuff on both sides. Together, combined, right? So then, to do the shape fillet, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's a whole different software. To do the edge blend, well, we need an edge. Right now, there's no edge on the bottom where they meet. So guess what we gotta make? We gotta make one of those trim and extends, make corner. That guy and that guy, have enough body faces for both. Uh, I got an arrow going the wrong way. Right, I'm gonna hit okay. So see it trimmed them both. That's okay back here because that's beyond the edge of my part. Right at the edge of my part. So that, that's gonna wash out later. But now I've got a hard edge all the way around. And yeah, you should hide the intersection because when you do an edge blend, you're not picking a curve, you're picking an edge. So you don't want to accidentally have that intersection curve in the way. So now we're gonna do the edge blend. Here's the concept that I was talking about with the measuring. Okay. It tells you to show the original thing, this guy. Okay. When I show that though, I know those points are back behind there, but I can't see them. These, these are. Not, I'm not worried about these anymore. These are old. That's from the top. I'm working down here, but the points are hidden. So I tell you to. I just say use edit object display to adjust the translucency. Okay. What do I mean by that? I mean in the view tab. Go to Edit Object Display, and on that gray thing, make sure I pick the right one. I can pick them both. I'm going to hide. I'm going to hide this for a second. Okay. So we've got Edit Object Display. If I pick that body, I think, well, now what do I do? Then you hit OK. And when you hit OK, Edit Object Display is for colors and, and line thickness and things. It also includes translucency. Now you can make it as translucent as you want, but see how I, now I can see those points. See if you if you go off to the side, so I can't I can't see the points behind it. Now I can. Okay, that looks good. So I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay, it's translucent. Maybe you can see through it. I gotta show, and if I show any of these, I'll see why did that? Why did it make that translucent? I don't know, I don't know why it clicked on both of them. See when I tried to pick that other one before, it picked them both. I mean, that'll work for me, but I don't know why. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out later. It'll still work. Um, so anyway, I can see the points now, right? And I'm going to do an edge blend like we did before. So either surface or foam. Here's edge blend. 
and I need to pick the edge. If I go right in here, it's that edge. Okay. Just like we did the other edge, but up on the top. If anybody does that and you don't get the same thing where you're trying to do a translucency and it doesn't pick the blue, let me see. I don't know if anybody does that. Way. But here, here's the thing. You can kind of see my edge blend. Okay. I can see that. But I also want to be able to measure the existing edge blend on the gray one. So I have to see the gray one. Now, right now, you're going, I can't see it. It's behind that. But here, watch. So if I pick that and the first point, well, I'm sorry, it says start out with a 50 because I guess in the real part, the edge, the, the blend down here along the bottom is at 50. So we're going to, the overall default one is 50, okay? But up in the front, it's actually pretty thin, right? So remember what we do, we go to specify radius point, right? Then we're going to pick the first point, I got to go back to my tree here, the first point down on the bottom, mine, I didn't name all these, but here's RSL.1, it's right there, okay? I don't know what the radius is supposed to be. So what I tell you to do is temporarily, make sure I'm telling you in the right spot. Yeah. Even though I'm in this window, right? I'm in that window, I'm in the middle of an edge line. You can actually, in NX, you can do this. You can go to the analysis tab, go to the more button, local radius see that it's like oh you just got out of the edge blend so you blew it but no it, it, it knows I it knows I'm in the middle of edge blend but it lets me go do this so it's that same thing I showed you local radius and the point I'm working on is this one right here so I'm gonna pick this face and it says 11.9983 basically that's 12 you can round off right and, and you know you can double check well it's right there is it still 12 right there no matter where I go this guy's pretty much 12, that guy's pretty much 12. So I can conclude, I'll, I'll just cancel, it's 12. So on that one, that first point is 12. You can see how it, it, I don't know if you can see it, but it just adjusted mine. So there's the first one, all right? Now the rest of the edge blend is the same as it was before. It's still on specified radius. I would have these named correctly. Next one would be RSL.2, the instructions, well, no, the instructions. You're supposed to measure. Well, what do I got to measure? I got to measure the gray. So here, again, it, it's right now it's on 12, but I'm going to go to this guy again, local radius, and that's the point. You, you, you'll know which point it is. So I'll, and now that one, it, there's two fillets that don't look like they're constant. So how am I going to know exactly what it is, right? Well, watch. If I click on that, that says that says 17.5980, right? See what I mean? The point is right where these two meet, wherever that seam is. That's where I try to create the points. If I move this, now it says 18.919. Well, if I go right in the curve, it's 19. Right there is 19.4. I'm sorry, right in the curve, it's 19.9. So it's 20. The beginning of this one's 20. The end of that one's 20. So right there, it's supposed to be 20. Make sense? You're just gonna move, the, move that little thing around and look at the minimum radius is you'll be able to tell, okay, right where these meet, and they're, they're pretty much round numbers, so that one's, what did I just say? Well, 20, I think I said 20. It's not up in the top, I'm in the wrong field, gotta be careful there. That was 50, this should be 20, like so. And then we would go to the next one. I'll just do, I'll do the one that I did. It's on specified radius point, that would be, I think this one. Go to the measuring tool. That's right over here somewhere. It's one of these guys. 75.0, 73, 74, 75. So where they meet, I want to say that's 75. So again, make sure you're in the, the field down there. And it does name that, the system names that, V radius three. Varying radius third point is what that one is, okay? And, uh, and, and then you do the rest of it. So, you go to the next point, go to the measure tool, stick a little point on there, move the point around, and see what the radius is. Cancel this and type in that radius, all right? So you'll do that all the way around for like 11 different points. And then you'll have your um, finished radius. Let me type 
pretty sure that's the last thing I had to show you. Yeah, from the very end of it, it's going to look like that. Okay, so it's going to get bigger, and then gray, and then halfway in the middle of this, it's going to get smaller, and the rest of the way it's going to be constant again. Okay. See, even here, I, I put down here, if warnings appear for LSL.3 and LSL.4, that if you do get errors, it, some people do, and it's occasionally, it's over here somewhere. So it's on the left side. It says, you know, because I, I think you, when you measure it, it's about 80. But it says, try a value of 79.5, then, then it should work. If you don't, if you get errors at 80, try 79.5. Experiment with any numbers there. See if it's whatever works. Um, I believe, yeah, I think that's it. So remember, when you're done, you really only modified the floor pan. You didn't modify the assembly. But the best way to make sure you save everything, go to the assembly navigator, make the assembly branch, the work part, and hit save up here, because that saves the work part and any modified components. So anything that's from here down, all of its children, it would save everything. Okay? Sound good? Try to figure out quickly why my rag, why it's making the whole thing transverse when I don't want it to. Do you have a question? No. Oh, so you get out. I, you know, when I, in case you want it, I figured something out, but I don't know why it's doing it. When I went to edit object display, and I wanted to pick, I thought it would just pick one sheet body versus another. But see how it's picking the whole thing? Like I said, it made everything translucent. I never had to do this before, but in the selection, there's a type filter up here. You can set it to sheet body, and then it'll only pick one or the other. So I didn't want that one. I've never had to do that before. I never had to change that that selection type. It's weird. It's a little different than scrap, right? It must be. Yeah, I don't know why it's. I don't know why it doesn't work. Because they just changed it. it didn't change. Look at the camera.